Sunrise and sunset, promise and fulfillment, birth and death. The whole drama of life is written in the sands of time. We present a new series of radio programs, The Clock. Have you ever seen a one-eyed cat? I saw one once, and its skin was the color of polished ebony. It was owned by a man named Wake, a quiet and gentle old soul who lived far out in the country. You know, people often ask me why I'm always in a hurry, why I never stop or pause. Well, Jasper Wake has never asked this question. You see, for Jasper, time stands still. Yes. Oh, is Mr. Wake at home? Do you have an appointment? I have this letter he sent me. Oh, yes, the practical nurse. Please come in. Thank you. Your name is... Uh, Goff. Leah Goff. I'm Mrs. Wilton, the housekeeper. I suppose you know about Mr. Wake's condition. Well, not exactly. Have you had any experience with paralytics? Oh, yes, yes, plenty. Poor Mr. Wake has been confined to a wheelchair for over a year now. He's unable to move from the waist down. Oh, I'm so sorry. But don't sympathize with him. Now, if you come this way, it isn't his pride that makes him reject sympathy. He wants people to be cheerful when they're around him. He doesn't like to make them unhappy. I guess Mr. Wake is just about the nicest, kindest gentleman I've ever known. Just a moment, please. Mr. Wake. Yes, Mrs. Wilton. It's Miss Garth, the practical nurse who answered your advertisement. Oh, please show her in. This way, Miss Garth. Thank you. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Please sit down. Oh, thank you. Quiet, Flora. <laughs> Cats always seem to be a little uneasy in the presence of strangers. <laughs> What's the matter with her? Why does she keep her head to one side that way, Mr. Wake? Uh, she's blind in one eye, poor thing. Oh. And it's gotten her into quite a bit of mischief, too. As you can observe, Miss Garth, I'm unable to move out of this wheelchair. Yes, Mrs. Wilton mentioned it to me. Uh, up to now, I've had a male nurse, a strong young man who's been able to lift me with ease and handle me like a baby. I have a man's strength, Mr. Wake, in my arms and shoulders. <laughs> uh, uh, Lewis has left me now. He's gotten married. And as I was casting about for a suitable substitute, I thought of hiring a woman. You see... I discovered I need more than mere physical strength in a nurse. You need companionship, Mr. Wake. Yes, that's it, exactly. I know how it is to be lonely. And I know how a constant friend can make things easier. You seem to be able to read my mind, Miss Garth. Uh, I have a fairly good education, Mr. Wake. Besides, I, I'm sensitive to my patients. Sensitive? I like to read to them and... Play for them on the piano. When I go on a case, Mr. Wake, I devote my life to it. And I'd like the chance to devote my life to you. You're an extraordinary woman. I don't want this position unless I can be sure I'm badly needed. I want you to feel that every minute of the day, every hour, my thoughts are only for your comfort. Your salary... Oh, I don't care about the salary. Oh, this home... Has a wonderful atmosphere. A chance to belong and be needed. That's all I ask for. <laughs> Nonsense. You'll be paid and well paid. I'm a rich man, if a helpless oh, one. Oh, you won't be helpless any longer, Mr. Wake. I want so to help you. Oh, I I'm sorry you'll think now that I'm giving you sympathy, but it, it isn't that. You'll be giving me much more than I'll be giving you, Mr. Wake. I need someone to depend on me, or I can't exist. And I need someone to depend on. I think we'll get along very well, Miss Garth. I'm sure we will. 
Mr. Wade. Oh, oh, oh Laura. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Wilton. Oh, yes, Miss Garth. Have you been hired? I have. Oh, I'm so glad. It'll be nice having another woman around the house. Up to now, it's just been Mr. Wake and me since Lewis left. Oh, I- I'd better fill you in on the routine. Mr. Wake dines at seven while you and I will eat at six, and that gives us time I dine to... at seven myself, Mrs. Wilton. Oh, oh I see. Well, I suppose I can change my hour. There'll be no need for that. What? Mr. Wake and I will dine together. You'll eat by yourself, as usual. Oh, you you have a beautiful garden, Mr. Wake. And you seem to know a great deal about flowers, uh, Miss Garth. I've always loved delicate and gentle things. Yes, you're a gentle person. A very gentle person, and I'm glad you're here. Mrs. Wilton? Uh, what is it, Miss Garr? I left my shoes in the hall this morning. Did you see them? Yes. Then why weren't they polished? Miss Garr, I think it's about time you and I came to an understanding. I'm neither a bootblack nor a chambermaid. Since you came to this house three weeks ago, you've done nothing but order me around. And I'm getting just a little tired of oh, it. you. <coughs> Perhaps that will put you in your place. Oh, oh I won't stand for that. I'll tell Mr. Wick. That's what you I... what? Oh, my arm. You're breaking it. Oh, please, please. I could wrench your arm out of its socket with a twist of my hand, Mrs. Oh. Wilton, and I assure you that if you annoy me again, I'll do just that. Oh, please let me go. My shoes are still in the hall. I want them polished within the hour. Do you understand? Yes, yes only please don't hurt me. Oh, don't hurt me. I've brought your milk, Mr. Wake. You're very sweet to think of it, Miss Garth. Now you finish it. Come on, every drop. It's good for you. <laughs> that seems to be your only concern. <laughs> the things that are good for me. No. Uh, have you been uh, happy since I've come? These past two months have been wonderful. I've never known anyone as kind or as self-sacrificing as you. And I've never felt so contented. Oh. I, I want you to know, sir, that... Well, it, it isn't because you pay me. Of course not. I would never suggest such a thing. It's just that, well, you have no one else, and I have no one else. We seem to give each other a great deal of strength and understanding. You've even made me forget my affliction. (laughs) Even though Flora here keeps reminding me of it. You seem to have such a great affection for that cat, Mr. Wakey. Keep her on your lap almost all the time. Uh, poor Flora is rather handicapped with one eye, and she has a habit of running between people's legs when they walk. Uh, I hold her on my lap to keep her out of mischief. <laughs> you see, she's already caused her quota of trouble uh, with me. With you? A little over a year ago, as I was walking across my room, Flora ran between my feet. I, I tripped and uh, broke my back. You mean she... Caused your paralysis? Uh, Indirectly, uh, yes. And you still keep her? It wasn't Flora's fault that she couldn't see too well. Uh, Besides, I have a great capacity for pity and forgiveness, uh, as you do, Miss Gow. Mr. Wake. Oh, uh, what is it, Mrs. Wilton? I've been trying to see you alone for quite a while now. But Miss Garth hasn't given me the chance. I'm afraid I don't understand, Mrs. Uh, Wilton. Why are you so nervous, Mrs. Wilton? Uh, what's the trouble? Mr. Wake, I... I'm leaving. Leaving? You mean leaving my employ? Yes. But why? What... Uh... I refuse to stay here with... with that woman. Are you referring to Miss Garth? I'm sorry that I can't give you notice. I'm going tonight. But if you want to know the reason, I'll tell it to you. Alone. In the library. What is all this, Miss Garth? Oh, Mr. Wake, I, I'm so sorry it had to come up this way. I didn't want to tell you because I, I knew how fond you are of Miss, Mrs. Wiltman. Well, I was almost sure she'd never, never do it again. Do what again? 
steal from you. No. I, I prayed that I wouldn't have to tell you. Well, what has she stolen? How do you know this? That picture of your dead wife was in a solid gold frame. If you remember, Mrs. Wilton told you the picture was missing, that it had been mis misplaced. Well, she stole that picture for the frame. I can't believe it. She's stolen several other things. Your tie pin, your diamond cufflinks. Oh, you thought you'd lost them, but I knew. Mrs. Wilton realizes that I know, and she's trying to brazen it out. She hopes that you'll get rid of me instead. But, but Harriet Wilton was a trusted friend. How could the she... The thing she stole, Mr. Waker, in her room... I'm sorry to have to do it this way, but your security means more to me than sentiment. And I'm going to prove what I say right now. I'll go to her room. I would like to speak to you alone, Mr. Wake. There'll be no need for an explanation, Mrs. Wilton. What do you mean? I found these in your room. I don't understand. Because of the many years of faithful service you've given me in the past, I won't inform the police. But I want you to take your things and leave this house immediately. She made this up. She did this just to get rid of Mrs. me. Mrs. Wilton. I want you to leave now without any further discussion. Very well, Mr. Wade. But heaven help you when you're all alone with her. Sorry, Miss Garth. Oh, that's all right, Mr. Wake. I've forgiven her, as you have, for everything. I'll hire another housekeeper in the morning. That won't be necessary. No? You won't need anyone else from now on, Mr. Wake. But me. <laughs> A cat has nine lives, according to the experts. And the four-legged creatures can afford a risk or two. But man has only one, and when he finds that one in jeopardy, each minute becomes more precious than the next. And each hour is spent in staving off his doom. I'm afraid I've become a little worried, Miss Garth. Worried? About what? I... I just hadn't heard from anyone in so long. I used to receive an occasional visit from my friends in the city, but now I... Aren't you lonely, Mr. Wake? With me? Oh, it's not that, Leah. Leah? Oh, I, I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, please, I, I've, I've been wanting you to call me Leah ever since I came. Well, <clears throat> you sent those letters I wrote. Yesterday. I don't know why the others were never answered. Perhaps your friends don't want to be bothered. Well, how do you mean? No one is cheered by an invalid. An, an invalid? You've never referred to me that way before. I just want you to know, Jasper, that I'm the only one you can depend on. I'm the only one in the world who really loves you. Leah. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I've been holding that back for so long I shouldn't have said it. Leah, you've been a good friend to me and a great help, but uh, I don't want you to go too far in your own imagination. You mean you... You don't share my affection? I admire you greatly, and, and there's nothing in the world I wouldn't do for you. But love... Well, I'm afraid I'm just a little too old for that sort of thing. I see. Uh, oh, please don't be hurt. Oh, no, no, I... I think I understand. Do you know... I've just had an idea... I think we'll have a little party this weekend. A party? I'll invite some friends, uh, old cronies. Uh, it's really been rather dull around the house in the last few weeks. And I, I feel the need of a little company. <laughs> Male company, I mean. No reflections on you, my dear. But you've written to your friends and they haven't answered. Uh, lazy cusses. But I'll fool them. I'll call them personally. <laughs> it's odd I didn't think of that before. Uh, may I have that phone, please? Very well. well let's see. Uh, I'll call my attorney first. An excellent fellow, John Hanley. You'll like him. Funny. Operator doesn't answer. Hello? Hello? Jasper. Yeah? 
The phone is out of order. Out of... Since when? It's been out of order for quite a while now. Why didn't you mention it to me? I didn't think it was necessary. Not necessary. To be without a phone all the way out here? Why? It's our only communication with the outside world. I know. What do you mean, you know? I don't want you to communicate with anyone, Jasper. I want you all to myself. Don't you think you're being a bit silly, Leah? Just you and I, in this lonely house. It's all I've ever wanted, Jasper. Now, look here. Let's stop this nonsense and get that phone fixed. Come along. We'll take the car and drive into town. We'll get a phone mechanic up here in no time at all. What did I do with my car keys? I have them, Jasper. Oh, well... uh... Leah. Yes? Did you say you mailed those letters I wrote yesterday? Yes. Then what are they doing in my desk? I was going to destroy them after I'd read them. I haven't had the chance to yet. But it doesn't matter. Never mind the letters. If you're taking me into town right now... No, Jasper. I demand that you drive me in, Leah. You're never leaving here, Jasper. And neither am I. (laughs) <laughs> I'll prepare your dinner. What is it? Why, you haven't finished your dinner, Jasper. I'm not hungry. You've hardly eaten in the past few days. You know, that isn't nice. Leah, for heaven's sake, tell me what this is all about. Why are you keeping me a prisoner here? What have I done to deserve this? I love you, Jasper. I don't believe it. I was hoping one day we'd marry You must be out of your mind. Do you think for one second that I'd marry you? Is that your game? Are you after my money? Frankly, Jasper, you're making it more difficult for me. I warn you, Leah. I love you so, but you won't reciprocate. Well, perhaps you'll do something else. Perhaps you'll sign this paper for me. What's printed on that paper? Your will. And you leave everything to me. My will... Now I know you're crazy. Jasper! Do you think I can't see through your hideous scheme? Do you think I'm a child? Why, you... You may be fiend enough to kill me if I sign that paper. And I'll kill you, Jasper. If you don't. Time moves on relentlessly for Jasper Wake. Like all of us, he cannot stop it, regardless of what the next few minutes hold for him. Where are you taking me, Leah? We're going for a walk in the garden. I hate the garden. I hate everything in it. Why, Jasper? Because I love it so. You'll live and die in this house, Leah, before you get me to sign that will. Oh, you're so stubborn, Jasper. You'll see how stubborn I can be after a while. I don't intend to wait much longer. No? As a matter of fact, I'm giving you just 24 hours to make up your mind. And if I refuse? You won't refuse, Jasper. We'll see about that. Tomorrow at 6, you'll sign that will. Never. Wait a minute. Stop this chair. I intended to stop right here. So, as a last cheap trick, you've destroyed my garden, too. I haven't destroyed it, Jasper. You've been digging holes in it. Just one pitch was all I dug. Look at it closely, Jasper. It's long and it's deep. What does it remind you of? No, no. Yes, Jasper. And I dug it just for you. Don't you intend to eat lunch, Jasper? Get out and leave me alone. Oh, you're so irritable today. Why, that filthy little beast out... Keep away from her, Leah. It's treat that cat as if it was human. Compared to you, it is human. You know, I feel sorry for Flora. Do you? It's unfair to allow a cat like that to suffer. Leah, if you dare lay one finger on Flora... (laughs) One finger would be enough to take care of its other eye. (laughs) You're not a woman. You're a female horror. Get out of my sight. Get out and leave me alone. Yes, it's two o'clock, Jasper. The will is on your desk. I'll be back at six with a fountain pen. Well, Jasper? You're 
right on time, aren't you? Have you made up your mind? Suppose I sign. Then what? I'll be your devoted slave. As I've always been. For how long? The rest of your life. Do you see what I've placed on that table, Jasper? It's a bottle of chloroform. A few drops on this wad of cotton and you're finished. Do you want this cotton across your face? Will you let me live if I sign that will? A bargain is a bargain. Give me the pen. You're very sweet, Jasper. Flora. Flora, come back. Never mind the cat. There's your paper. Thank you, Jasper. You're... You're going? Not just yet. What are you doing with that bottle? I told you I'd be your devoted slave for the rest of your life. I neglected to mention how short a time that would be. Yeah. I know. You're going to kill me anyway. I thought you might have one shred of pity. But you haven't. Goodbye, Jasper. Leah. And thanks for everything. Mr. Wake! Mr. Wake, open up! Break the door down, Sheriff. I know something's happened to him. Mr. Wake! Mr. Wake! Mr. Wake! Where are you? I'm over here, Mrs. Wilton. Oh, are you okay? Mrs. Wilton here said somebody might be trying to murder you for you. Uh-uh. I've been trying to get you on the phone, Mr. Wake, for days. Then I noticed you never came into town anymore. And, I'm uh, uh, quite all right, Mrs. Wilton. Uh, that woman, where is she? She's wanted by the police. Yes, you were right about her, Mrs. Wilton. Quite right. Where is she? Did she get out? No, she's in the next room, Sheriff. In the next But ro- there's no hurry. She tripped over Flora here when she tried to kill me. She can't escape. She can't even move. She's paralyzed. And that is the story of Jasper Wake as recorded by the clock. Leah's punishment was well befitting of her crime. A coincidence? Her accident, you mean? Well, now, really, life mirrors a great number of even stranger things. And I happen to know that lightning can strike twice in the same place. I'll prove it to you sometime. If you'll join me in my perch high above that skyscraper I like to cling to. The lofty building near Madison Square. You can see the entire city from that crow's nest and there's nothing more dramatic in the storm. So join me there some evening, and the two of us can pass a little time. The clock will be heard again next week, same time, same station. The clock is directed by John Saul, a Grace Gibson radio production.